bosses and bosses. It's your girl Blue, and I'm rocking with Fam TV. <laughs> What's going on? Fam TV, you don't know. You got Boogie Blue in the building. Yeah, Blue. First out of Buffalo. You are already big seven one six in the building. You know what I'm saying? Buffalo, don't, not too many Buffalians, but Buffaloians. Buffalonians. Buffalonians. Uh -huh. come, through the, come through the stool, but it's always a pleasure. Well, we here. And you got a lot of blue up in here, so yeah, yeah, we here. You know, you know. First of all, let's get right into your name. Yes. What's the origin of Boogie Blue? Um, so people was just calling me Boogie because I used to dance a lot and I used to fight a lot. So it was like, yo, she getting Boogie, da da da, you know, back in the day shit. And then um, my brother got killed when I was younger, and his favorite color was blue. So like. I don't know. I can't really remember if it was like a on purpose thing or subconsciously, but like um, I just started wearing blue a lot. So then people just started calling me blue, and then um, it kind of just got put together somewhere later in high school. It was just like boogie blue. My boogie used to have an e on it and everything. I don't know what the hell I was doing, but I figured it out. And I want to say about. 2015, I officially put them both together, and here we are. So the the aesthetic became before the name? Yes, uh, I wasn't even rapping. I didn't start rapping until, um, like, I had did, like, a little lunchroom table thing with my friend at the time, but that was, like, the extent of it. But I didn't start rapping until um, after my second son was born. I was, like, 20. 20 like either 22 or 24 i want to say around that i think i was 22 but i really wasn't um and then even when i started rapping i, I was making music i wasn't bad on it so um yeah the aesthetic definitely came before the name and then i have an aunt who wears orange every day everything in her house is orange i have another aunt is the same with purple so i'm like well if they can do that with orange and purple i know i could wear blue every day if i feel like it you know how you when you a kid it's like you know like should i do it and then you get older and it's like i don't give a fuck if y'all don't like that I'll wear blue that's on you that's been interesting though that it kind of run in the family though <laughs> <laughs> a little bit a little bit here and there but also the only time you ever really catch me um not wearing blue i i guarantee it will i'll be either wearing tupac or like mickey mouse like, those is, like, the only exceptions. So this is, like, every day. It's not just for, like, battle rap. No. Word. No. Word, that's fire, though. I love it. I just love it real bad. I like Cause it. Because that was one of my questions. Like, what made you, like, go so extreme with it? Yeah, this came before rap. Word. Me and this blue shit deeper than rap. And that's deep. So, like, it's deeper than rap. That's fire. Let's talk about your upbringing a little bit. Buffalo born and raised? You are ready. I, I moved to Atlanta for a year, but um, I came back because, like, I'm a daddy's girl. So, yeah, I know. You know how that is. Stereotypical mother-daughter relationship type shit. And um, I love her. Like, that's my dog now. But, you know, we just had a couple of troubles back then. So, I came back, lived with my dad, and... I'm the baby on my dad's side. I'm the baby of 10 kids. So it was really just me and him because they're all older. And, yeah, I was raised. Um, so my mom and my my mom and my stepdad and my dad and my stepmom was together before I even was born type shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just happened to come in type shit. So they just thought they was going to have a boy. Like, that's what my dad told me all the time. He's like, me and your mom, both under the sun. So, you, like, basically, like, you know, she was cute. She thought he was cute. Because even knowing my parents, I would never think that they would have ever been together. So, like, I never seen them in our house together type shit. Like, but, your real parents? Yeah. Or but I always had my mom and my dad and then my other mom and my dad. Like, I always, they always all been in my life so that's how I was raised and um even though I had so many siblings it was still like I was by myself primarily or with my little brother um for my mom so it's like I was still like very much my own path because nobody was in my age gap besides my mm -hmm. younger brother so now nah, I feel that too I'm pretty much the same way like the closest cousin I got some of you like 
three years. Mm -hmm. Either way, and then yeah. my little brother's seven years from me, so I'm. Too. So you gotta be the the one, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And then I'm dealing with my brother actually getting killed at around like you know like young, like oh four. I mean, he got killed in oh three, so it's like I was young going through that, and it was just like a crazy time in my life for me, like you know what I'm saying? So it was just like I just started doing wild stuff, like you know. Some of the, you know what I'm saying? Not really so much. Everybody got this perception like, oh, she must have been a freak or something. But I really didn't. I did used to flirt with guys because that's all guys pretty much wanted like at that time. So I would lead you to believe like you could almost, but never was. But like nobody could really say that about me. It was always like, oh, she cool as hell. And I always had male friends. And then that's how I ended up venturing into rap because my homies was dudes so would you say um both uh sides was cordial your parents no like they pretty much i mean they not cordial but like they both raised me but it wasn't like they 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 were cool like they wasn't the coolest but it's like I, they never held me from each other and yeah. but i was always with my siblings and then at home i was the older sibling but i like, I can't say it was a week where my dad didn't get me, and I can't say that it was a week that I wasn't at home with my mom. You know what I mean? What, what, what was the difference, though, in households and um, values? So, my, and my mother's household was very much Jehovah's Witness, very much Rastafarian. You right. get what I'm saying? And my dad's house was very much Baptist, but it was similar to like structure and stuff like that. But over here, it was a lot of kids because it was like, like, Younger, like it was like a lot of my brothers and sisters stayed at home there, and then it's like primarily like going to school and stuff. I stayed with my mother, but I was over at my dad's house every weekend, every holiday, every break. So it was like I still had that um brother sister. Now, like one of my older sisters, uh, she go by Angel SGP. She was a rapper, right? But I really wasn't into it because in this Rastafari and Jehovah's Witness household, you can't even listen to certain music. You know what I mean? So it's not even played. It's not even a thought in my mind to listen to this music. But then I go over here and I'm hearing Tupac. I'm hearing Biggie. I'm hearing Missy. I'm hearing Lauryn Hill. I'm hearing um, Queen Latifah. And it's just like a new world for me, you know? So, so what, was, what was the difference in energies? And obviously you started rapping. So mm -hmm. I'm, get, I'm, I'm assuming at least. I don't like to assume, but I'm assuming um, you, you was. I had the idea to start rapping. Um. Because I was already writing stories. I was already writing, um, like, poems and stuff. That's usually how it starts manifesting. Did, so I'm, what I'm saying is, like, did that side connect to you a little bit more? Like, did you feel, like, the rap Tupac and all that more than the other music? No, it, because still you have to realize, like, my mom's father, um, like, so my family is, like, the Halls. Like, Prentice Hall, he was a phenomenal boxer. Um, Bobby Hall, he used to play for Aretha Franklin and him. So it was, like, I still had... Some, like, soul music mainly, jazz, blues, stuff like that. And as far as rap, it was like, have you ever came over a friend's house to eat and the food just ain't no good? It wasn't, like, Curtis Blow and them and all of that. But it wasn't really like, no, we're not about to just sit here and listen to Biggie and Tupac all day. Maybe Biggie, never Tupac, you know. Um, but it was new when I went to my dad's house, when I heard my sisters and them playing this stuff that they're actually sneaking listening to because my stepmom not with that shit. You know what I'm saying? But like it was new and I liked it because I was kinda like a badass. Like all my brothers and sisters is like badasses. Like you know what I'm saying? Like they was like tough. So of course as a sibling it's like I can't take no shit because they don't take no shit. Type of thing. And the type of music that they listen to reflected that. So I it was like New, like, ooh, exciting. And I also thought it was funny because I was bad as hell. <laughs> so you started hustling, you said? And then you had some friends and you started rapping? So I started, I started, so my stepfather really was a plug. And I found his sash one day. Now, what I didn't know is that my little brother used to be taken from his sash to give to my cousin to bribe her to, like, babysit him for the night or whatever, right? Because, like, if my parents was going out, my mom had to work, whatever, whatever, somebody needed to babysit. He would bribe my cousin. and But I didn't know he was taking 
the weed too, mm-hmm. but I was taking it because I found it and it was certain stuff that I wanted that my parents just wasn't going to buy. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that came out years later though. We was growing, we couldn't get with us. <laughs> so what age was that? <laughs> um, I wouldn't say so. I was around... When I first started, I want to say maybe like 14 going on to 15, because then in that age range, um, that's yes, when they yes. moved to Atlanta. After that, they moved to Atlanta. So, um, one second, my mouth dry. Sorry. So, I wouldn't do it around where I lived at because um, I used to watch a lot of jail shows. You know, that's when jail shows were starting to come around and stuff like that. And, um... I'm I'm hearing like people always be like, you know, this person was watching, this person was watching. Well, you know, certain people can't watch me if I'm not over here. You like what I'm saying? So I would sneak out the projects. And I just started doing that until I found other stuff that was easier and more lucrative to sell. And then I got pregnant. Got pregnant. Slowed that shit down and just got back into school. Um, one day I'm scrolling on Facebook and then this is way farther. Um, cause now I have two kids at this time. I'm scrolling on Facebook. I see a post that say, call this number and leave a drop on our voicemail to be on our next mixtape. Um, and I called and I wrapped a 16. I know it's a 16 now. I didn't know it was a 16 then. And I called and wrapped it on a machine. It was the dynasty boys, which was like a real popping, um, um, like a rap group uh, at, from Buffalo. Like these dudes was getting chased down at Galleria by mad fans, swarm of girls, all types of stuff. So when I see the joint or whatever, that's when I called and I rap. They like, they call me back. They're like, yo, are you signing with anybody? Like, da da da. I'm like, no, they like come in tomorrow for a meeting and the rest is history. It been up since that day. Oh, did you freestyle at 16? No, I wrote, um, cause I seen the stat and then I, um, cause I was making music at this time, okay. but like it, I wasn't really doing nothing. I just had dropped some stuff on SoundCloud. I had just found SoundCloud cause even though I had a sister that was doing it, it wasn't like she was like really giving me Jews. We, we not that close. Mm. So, um, I found SoundCloud. I just uh, SoundCloud. I just started uh, rapping freestyles, like walking to work, like writing them. Or I would tell people, give me a topic on Facebook, and I would rap it and post it and stuff like that. Um, I see the stat earlier that day. I write it when I'm at work. When I come home, I rap it on a machine. They call me back. They have a meeting with me. Um, we record. Um, Don't make sense. And the next day, I came back and record recorded Girl in a Magazine. Um, from then over the next like two weeks, I made like 16 tracks all together. Um, but 14 made the mixtape and then the blue apocalypse was born. Um, after the blue apocalypse, my little brother Dylan calls me and me and my little brother and me and my oldest sister, Marquita is like the tightest. Um, my little brother calls me one day at work. Now I had dropped the blue apocalypse and, um, you know, it was the first time I had like made money off of my work and it was like hand to hand sales, like ten dollars. Nobody questioned it, like, oh yeah, you know. And um my brother called me, he like, Yo, Nai, I want you to see something. Now I knew only as far as I knew about battle rappers like Cassidy, um, and I had seen Remy battle Lady uh Lady Luck. So He's like, I want you to uh, come over when you get off work. I want to see. He's like, I, I want to show you something. He's like, I think you could do this. So I said, okay, go over there. He showed me Miss Hustle and QB. And I fell in love with Miss Hustle. Fell in love with her. Like, like to the point where, like, I was so happy for her to come up. Like, I was, I just fell in love with her. I was like, yeah, I could do this. I could really do this. I sent the email to URL. Uh, Boss Chick Battle League and Queen of the Rings and Rain hit me back and it's been up and downs but mostly ups with this. So so back real quick to the uh, mixtape in the in, in the um, sixteen. So obviously it sounds like you had a whole bunch of written material and ready to go or something or 
at least ready to go with some. What influenced you to start rapping? Period. Like, what interested you into start writing the raps? Um. So I'm very much a person where I, if I want to do something, I just do it. I try mm-hmm. it once and I see how I feel about it. So it was very much. I've seen the stat. I wrote something and was like, well, just confident in yourself. So the only thing I had done before then was I had heard, um, um, I think it's Kid Ink. You could tell him that I've been through hell and back. That song, mm-hmm. I had heard that and, um, I wrote over it. Niggas and bitches love to hate. They be talking around the town but silent in my face. So I just wrote that, right? For no apparent reason. Just because I like the beat. Just for fun Yeah, like yeah. I just like the beat. Cool. So um, the next day, I seen that stat. Literally seen the stat. When I, um, because I actually have a recording of me rapping that, because that's one of the songs, it's called Firebat. That's one of the songs I had did. Remember I said I did like 14 tracks. Mm-hmm. That's one of the songs that I actually ended up doing for my first mixtape. But um, I seen the stat the next day. I was like, I'm about to really try this shit. Like, really try this shit. And I did. So that, so I, w- would you say that attitude also transferred when you saw Miss Hustle on that stage rapping? Like, oh, nah, she nice with it or something? Or what was, what what drew you to that? You know what I'm saying? Well, what made you feel proud? I was, of? I had started writing over songs, mm. right? And, but I never was really doing nothing with him. Me and my brother was just like, you know, fucking around. He was really, my, my little brother could sing his ass off and it pisses me because he don't, he, he played here and there. He was like, okay, I'm gonna do this, but he could, he really wanted them, you know? And, um, I don't know. I never really thought of me doing it. I was just. But what impressed you about it? You know what I'm saying? Like what? Cause they was it was females up there rapping. Yeah. Um. Coming from up, I don't know if it's an upstate thing or just, I don't know, or just a black woman thing. I don't know. But when you see other, when you're not a hater and you see other women doing something good that's supposed to be predominantly for men, it does inspire you. And this is something that I can do. So I'm going to try it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, if anybody would have ever told me that peop- I would have had 60,000 views in this or anything. No, I still don't have that many battles in this. But at the time when I was doing what I was doing, it was impactful. So that's why now sometimes I'm not even going to lie. When people be talking shit about me, I'm like, you don't. It, it's so easy to jump in now. Like, you know what I'm saying? But you had to really be there. And that's where I got my respect from because I was really out here. Like, really out here. So, when was your first battle? Um, so, my first... So, I had a battle with... You know who Tony Blanco is now, but when, yeah. I, when me and her first met, that's why I always joke with her about it. She used to go by Cherry. And Boss Chick Battle League at the time was... Um, they was a new league, but they were having um, a bit of issues with Queen of the Ring, right? And I don't really know... Um, the extent to what it really was, but that was a real thing. It was like a thing between them. And for some reason, every time um, Rain would say that she was about to book a battle, we wouldn't get it and it would go to, like, it would end up going over to Queen of the Ring or some of the battlers or whatever. Um, but that wasn't my business. Like, you know, I'm just, just trying to get in here. So Rain told me to, I ended up doing two phone battles. Um, she was trying to do them every week. We did, um, we battled the first time, but then the second time, um, we was only two girls, so we battled again. From there, she told uh, she told me to I was supposed to battle Flawless um, from Ohio. She was like, "Okay, we're gonna get your first on stage battle on from on with Flawless." But when I was already on my way up there, Flawless had backed out. And it was supposed to be three rounds. And I was going up there for like three days in advance because I had never been there and I wanted to scope the scene out. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, you know, get familiar. Mm-hmm. But 
um, flawless back out and she rain called me like she backed out now mind you i was supposed to go with bad people they all backed out on me the day before the battle so i ended up getting on the greyhound which would have took me which ended up taking me nine hours instead of the six that it would have just took the drive so i'm the so i'm so determined i still goes um she told me we got um highly on demand we got highly on demand for you so, uh, she gonna come outside and at the time, Holly on demand was kind of, you know, she was bubbling. She was on fire. So I was like, all right, cool. I wrote on my way up there. Um, I memorized my round and then Holly on demand versus Boogie Blue was born. Representing Buffalo, New York. To my right, we got Boogie Blue 716. We here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Just love. Man, you sound like all your life. You had to fight. <laughs> and that's cool, cause me too. But you can't hammer with a bitch that been working with loose screws and mixed views. Converted to hip too, so you ain't got a lie to kick it. You can get hip too. Shoes, fists, slit lip, you can get picked through. Ice cubes, pick views. I can get you too. I'm seeing you in cube vision. Dangerous grounds, mines. And if I reach, it's for missiles and rounds. You ain't Rosa, so this part won't make moves, and yeah, they call me blue, but I don't leave clues. I'm an activist. These are uh, record. These on YouTube. Yes. Well, I got because I did look back. I was trying to look back and see like when it was, but I, don't, I, I, I seen, I seen the offbeat was three years ago. That's um, that's as far as I seen back. The verbal war song. No, that's five years ago. Yeah, that's I would say I was that joint was old. old. Yeah. Um, you yeah. said the offbeat. No, it was Fly Guy Reckless. Oh yeah, 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 that was three years ago. Um, I don't know. I guess I I didn't see the map. So. Well, a, a little secret about um. I was just surprised about the verbal. I I didn't expect to see the verbal thumbnail. Yeah. Yeah. How was the verbal experience? Cause I fuck with verbal. Yeah, I like verbal war zone, but um, at the time, for what I was trying to do. Verbal Warzone wasn't getting the respect for what I needed to do, mm -hmm. you know, and I come, like I said, I come from making music. So it was, it was more so like, I love Verbal Warzone, you know what I'm saying? But, and I, I'm going to get back over there. But the whole thing is like, at the time it was like, okay, I'm trying to rep for this league. You know what I'm saying? Everybody dropping, jumping off the boat on top of me trying to rep for this league. Like I really fucked me and Rain really fucked like. Pause, first of all. I really fucked with Rain. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that was really my dog. So it was like um just going everywhere at the time. But at the time she's the one who introduced me to Chosen and them. So, you know, that's why I say all the time, it's only two people who could say that they did anything for me in Battle Rap for real. And that's Boss Chick Rain and Steams. The, that's it like everything else like I did on my own like because of who I am what you, what do you think about that verbal culture though that um beat? I a, lot, a lot it. of people don't like don't like verbal for some reason and I'm like yo they fire they cuz it's like the old school style of battling but they are like and I'm not even going to lie sometimes niggas be going over there being basura just like they do in regular a cappella battle rap but it's like, I don't know. I don't know why people be acting like, I don't know. But that shit needs to stop. Especially, shout out to Telly. Telly over there doing his motherfucking numbers. You know what I'm saying? And Mike Johnson. Come on. Like, you know what I'm saying? We got people out here. We got people getting busy for upstate. So, so what? That you not in there. Don't shit on a platform. Because it's like, you know, we still got people in there, though. That's holding it down. So, shout, shout out to my man. girl, Nolly, Nolly, she goes hard. Y'all already know. Shout out to Mike Johnson, too. He been on the show before, you know what I'm saying? Yes, Fire. sir. He just battled uh, Swave Seven. See, we, we doing big things out here. Um, for somebody who is oblivious to battle rap, how would you describe the culture? <laughs> it's marvelous, honey. <laughs> no, I mean, it's no, it's, you going to get out of battle rap whatever you put in, but what I will say is be your authentic self. 
Whoever that, that is, if you're a geek, be a geek. If you don't smoke, don't smoke. If you don't drink, don't drink. Like, if you don't pop ass, don't act like you do. It's just be who you are. Like, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people get fucked up for trying to be somebody that they're not in this culture. Like, you know? And the best way for me to describe it is it is a toxic relationship. It's like, it's like I know I shouldn't be fucked up with you, but... <laughs> I'm gonna let you hear one more time. I'm gonna let you. That's how. That's how this relationship is in battle rap, and it's like, I don't know. Cause, uh, do you think battle rap is a sport? I do. So this is okay. I I do sometimes too. Cause I I gotta say sometimes I gotta stay consistent. Cause I feel like battle rap is like boxing. It is. It's structured after boxing. You know what I'm saying? Actually. Cause when you get on that stage, it's one on one. It's no. Low. It's actually structured after boxing. Yeah, but what I mean is like. Where I get confused and with the biasness and the politics and all that, it's like how how important are groups and cliques in battle rap? Because at the end of the day, you are on that stage by yourself and you got to rap. Um, because <clears throat> you you got a couple groups, you know what I'm saying? Oh, we gonna talk about that. <laughs> 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 um, um. Me personally can say that the groups that I'm with is because I genuinely fuck with them. You know what I'm saying? Um, and for me, I like people like I'm like I'm a boss naturally. You know what I'm saying? But I also like teamwork. I like to be able to be like, let's do this as a conglomerate. Like you know what I'm saying? So what people understand is like, yeah, you could do shit alone, but it's bigger when you do it together. Like you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So if you have like five or more, 10 or more people screaming the same shit that eventually you, you might be low on the totem pole, but if you keep shouting that shit everywhere, people going to be like, yo, what the fuck is that? You know what I'm saying? What's going on? And then y'all working, you know? It's like, it, like say you got a thousand, thousand fans, thousand followers, however you want to put it, and you f- fuck with four other people. Now y'all working on one thing, now y'all got 5,000 followers mm-hmm. looking at it. You know, like, it's, exactly. It's simple, but even me, I, I'm recently getting a team together, and we about to do our first little event too. I would just say make sure that the people is dedicated because mm-hmm. it's one thing when everything when when the brand is flourishing and everything is popping and it's lit. Is that everybody want to rap it? Of course, because everybody want to be associated with something lit. Mm-hmm. But in those times of maybe you sick. Maybe you can't be on the internet. Maybe um, you have life going on. Will they still be able to carry it on? Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, shout out to Visa Key. Shout out to Triple S. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to me. Shout out to everybody that put in on the Blooniverse because, like, um, I was selling, I was using it as a merchant. Like, the Blooniverse is my actual LLC, my actual brand. Like, you know, and I was using it for my merch. Like when I go out of town, I take merch with me. Like, you know what I'm saying? These are little things behind the scenes that people don't know. Like I'm outside. When I when I used to go to New York for my first time, I was outside by myself on Times Square rapping, people pulling up their phones, recording me. Like, you know what I'm saying? I telling people, yo, do you like battle rap? Da da da. Oh, tomorrow I'm battling, da da da. That's what you have to do. Like, you know what I'm saying? Now, I forgot what the question was because I was remembering. Being out there, but anyway, what happened? Oh, we can just go to the next one. What's <laughs> what's what are some of the most important aspects of battle rap? Aspects is like p- punching, bar schemes, stuff like that, yeah. or um, hmm. oh, punching schemes. I'm a bars over everything type of person. Um, I also. I feel like the camera because that's what I really rely on for judging because. In the room, energy really affects a lot. People be drunk, high. I'm <laughs> power your blue, you know. But um, yeah, like you know, I, and when I hear people rapping good, like I'm always gonna, I'm not a hater. So if you rapping good, I'm I'm gonna be like, oh shit, yeah. I'm gonna hype it. Like if it's funny. I'm going to laugh. Mm-hmm. If it's trash, I'm going to ashtray it. Shout out to Burke Lob. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, but I don't know. It's like, it's definitely a culture. I'm happy that Buffalo, we got, we starting to finally have our own Buffalo battle rap culture as well, you know? But yeah. How many battles have you had? I only, how many battles do you think I got? 
Let's start there. Just really, I would well, I would have guessed like fifteen. Fifteen? No, I got like eighteen battles now. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I still don't have like twenty battles. I do got sixty thousand views, on mostly smaller leagues. But like, um, yeah. And I, everybody be like, oh, you should have been doing way more. People also forget that I have eleven backouts. You know, so. See, okay, so I'll be from the outside looking in. Mm-hmm. I don't got too much to say within like how shit work or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I feel like. It's got to be a bigger focus on people who are serious about the sport. Because mm-hmm. hearing that, it's like, come on, why? Like, they they probably well, knew. My situation that that was a little different. Like I, I'm not I'm not excusing it, but my situation was a little different because, like I said, I started back in 2015. You have to think about what the politics were in female battle rap. You have to think about where I started, mm-hmm. and then my life events. I had kids, like, you know, I had more kids, you know. So with me, first and foremost, I take accountability for my own, whatever I may have done to contribute to it. But also when I made the decision to be like, how far do you want to go with this? You know, I never said I want to be on URL. I never Mm -hmm. said I wanted to be like, oh, I'm going to be top of this shit. I love the rap. I like to keep the culture going. I love She Goes Hard. I rep She Goes Hard. Whenever Steams call me, I'm going to be there. But I'm not. I even hit him up like, yo, bro, what's going on? Well, we didn't have a card for him. And he's like, yo, I'm working on it. Da, 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 da. I love this culture. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I have a lot of blood, sweat, and tears in this motherfucking culture. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'll be trying to get people to understand. If I'm arguing with you, I give a fuck about you for this culture, even if I don't give a fuck about you in real life. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't even give up. I don't, I don't even talk to people I don't, who I don't think matter to this culture. Because otherwise, I'm just arguing with niggas, and I don't argue with niggas. Oh, do you feel like you're going to see yourself more in the media side of it? Yes. I yeah. think I'm really good at it. That's that's one of the main reasons why I want to sit down and talk with you. I, I hit you up way back before I even asked you about this one, right? Yes. Because I... I give everybody respect, you know what I'm saying? Especially when I see them working and I see them actually trying to push something to like another level. And I, in particular with you, it was, you know, spaces like four or five days a week y'all promoting. Mm-hmm. You got a whole calendar promoting people's stuff, your, your page. It was very consistent. Like, shout out to Upstate Spin the Block. When, when they yes, have, yes. when they had first started, I was telling them the same thing. Like, yo, I fuck with your shit. I fuck with what y'all doing. You know what I'm saying? And, I like that y'all just pushing it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's pushing the culture. So explain how, what, what was your thought process on how you was going to contribute to that? Um, so I was, one day I was just chilling with, uh, actually I was chilling with Ub. Um, if y'all know who Ub is, you know who Ub is, right? Yeah. All right, that's all that matters. So I was chilling with Ub one day and I was like, yo, I think I could uh, do this media shit or whatever. And, um, I had already started like kind of thinking about it because I was like, you know, it's kind of hard for people to be media up here and be, you know, objective, like, you know, or even subjective sometimes, you know? And I said, you know, it's for me, for me, I know with me, I'm never biased. Like when I'm doing my media shit, I'm never biased because I take myself out of myself. Like, you know what I'm saying? I look at it. I feel like I'm one of those people that can look at something from um, the overall view of it. And I feel like a lot of people can't take their self out of that because they're so prideful. And they don't understand pride is before fall, first of all. And even though you are your story, whatever, what are you, you're still a part of a culture, you know? And what is it saying? What is your legacy saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? So... That's what I just try to push. I try to let everybody be heard. You know, I get wrapped up in shit too, all the time. And I report on it too. Like, just like I wasn't myself. I even refer to myself as Boogie Boo, you know. But it's like, you know, it's a story. Eventually, 20 years down the line, when when Buffalo Battle Rap is like how New York Battle Rap is, it's going to be other medias, young medias. It's going to be other young girls, other young that's going to want to know 
Oh, am I the first? Who was the first? Who did this? Who did that? What epic battles? What was the story behind this battle? What did he mean in this battle when he said that? And sometimes I'm there to just either remind people of those moments and stir stuff up a bit or remind people, yo, you did say this. Like, no, we're not doing all of that. I don't let all of that fight in. I'm going to shoot true shit, go down in my shit. Like, nah, we're going to conduct ourselves like bosses, like professionals. I saw I'm telling like people, I say some stuff sometimes. People like, would you say that to their faith? Like, yeah, I mean, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I prefer like, not <laughs> to. Um, I prefer, not that I be talking about people behind their back and that. Let me know. Yeah, no. Nah, <laughs> I prefer if it's, uh, if I'm laughing and jokey jokey with you in the spaces, then I don't. I don't really care. If I have a issue with you in real life, I'm going to tell you personally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I'm also a type of person where whatever is said personally, because I am media and everybody be like, oh, I don't know, because you might da 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 First and foremost, I know that you really want to tell me. <laughs> so just tell me. But whatever you tell me personally, I'm not, it's not public. But if you say it anywhere publicly and I see it, oh, it's up. So, uh, <laughs> so on top of that, right? Legal owner, right? I say I have a platform, but okay. Same thing, kind of. Okay. Your platform probably could be viewed as a league, but that was another reason why I wanted to talk to you because yes. I seen the battles and I seen a voting system. Yes. And that's what I'm big on. So yes. do you think every battle should be judged in battle rap and why? I do. And this is the thing, though. I feel like because still with judge battles, there's still room to be like, oh, this, da, da, da. I feel like if we have a, like some type of consensus for the overall room vote, like whatever's done in the room, like the room vote, because like we said, people be drunk in the room, people be this, people do that. If you have... The crowd reaction is one of the top, one of the points um, on the system. So maybe you have a judge that favors that, so he's going to give you a five. But if you had a lot of crowd reaction with not really any bars, maybe you just a joker. It's going to reflect if every if every other judge says that you're a three or a two, and this one says that you're a five. It's going to reflect that that straight bias, you know. Mm-hmm. But just to have like maybe like a um, like a uh, like a control, like you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So in the room, it was officially called this instead of just walking around saying, "Oh well, I heard mm-hmm. mad people saying this," but you only talking to the ten people in the room that you know. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that that's my issue. That that was my problem with it mm-hmm. because that's that's it goes back to battle rap and sport. It was like because nobody loses. Mm-hmm. You know well, mm-hmm. but I said I said I feel like bringing a, a every battle being judged, having a winner and loser that hits a person's ego, ego, which would influence them to take it a little more serious. If that hits their ego, to, yeah, I would say if that hit their ego, they need to get out of battle. Lead into better, but, ba- ba- better battles. Though, yes, but see, the caveat with the Blue versus Judge battles is that I also have, because the wider range is on Facebook, on YouTube, and mm-hmm. stuff like that, so I also have a judging system on the, like, just regular polls. Yep, yep. yep. And I, where we tag the link to the battle and everybody who's watching the battle can also partake in the polls. And then what I do is I add those numbers up and then divide it. And then they give me like an average number. Mm-hmm. That's what I use for my, um, for my awards. So then it's like, you have the crowd, you have the, the room, like the official room judge battle. And then you still have that aspect of the internet, but it's your job to get fans you know what I'm saying? Like, so if you if you make the argument, like for instance, I'll give you an example. Um, Telly is a great rapper. You know what else Telly does great? He promotes his ass off. He also networks his ass off. Mm-hmm. And Telly is one of the people who I could literally say, <clears throat> with a lot of odds against him, came up on his own by himself. Literally can't say too many people had in, a hand in on what Telly do. He made those connections. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So for me. When I see, when I see from a, from a business point of view, I book him and our members go up a hundred. Oh, I'm already knowing. He comes to the event. He raps great, really, really well against be the MC. Okay. Mm -hmm. And people, he ended up losing, um, the actual battle, which is some discrepancies around that, but. It is what it is, but he won the polls. Mm-hmm. So now 
you got Telly and you got B to MC with a win, period, right? Mm hmm. But when they come down to them numbers, when you add them together and you have to compare it against everybody else on the card, them numbers look very, very different. Because one thing you're not going to, you can't fool the average, baby. That's numbers. Yeah. The, um, so the scoring system, too. The only critique I got with that mm -hmm. is more, not towards you, but more towards the people that are filling in them cards. Not everybody could get a five every time, yo. That got to build a little and range. That has so to do it can with be respectable. me. <laughs> you know, I also take responsibility for that because it's, I chose the judges. Okay. And as the battles, and you got to think, this is only my third event, and I'm getting it together, but bear with me. But I also chose judges. Um, first and foremost, my normal judge, like for instance, Feezy, right? Feezy, I love Feezy as a judge because. Shout out to Feezy. Yeah, because whether you his mans or not, he going to tell you. You know what I'm saying? Not only that, but uh, what I noticed about Fees, Dom, Rock Dom is the same exact way. They're going to tell you, like, okay, this is a, I don't care about the hype. They're not even listening to that because they already, they've been around battle rap so much. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, yeah, hype, cool, but mm -hmm. what, what, what's really been said, though? You know? So yeah. both of them, this last event, um, if you notice, nobody had no complaints about my other judges. Mm -hmm. But this last event, um, they both was gone. Feezy was gone somewhere and Dom and them had went on a family trip. So I'm like, okay, boom, I'm gonna fill somebody in. I did use Dre Social Buzz TV. However, what I will say is that I should have, just like I swapped out Kayla Bishop when Slat was battling, I should have made some other adjustments. Um, Knowing that sometimes people are certain fans of people, you know what I'm saying? And then I had got some backlash because um, he did get, he had grabbed Neek to help him finish his judging, which people felt like he shouldn't have did because she's newer and, you know, stuff like that. So I'm like, you know, and then of course I always have a guest judge, but I like to keep the guest judge, like uh, shout out to Looney Tunes, but I like to keep the guest judge because then to me that represents like a, a completely unbiased opinion. If you're a rapper and you understand how bars are structured, you you could definitely be that guest judger, you know. But we live when we learn. Yeah, with all that though, this is what I'm speaking on, like impact. Because in the impact, I don't even got this written down on my list, mm -hmm. but while we was talking, it reminded me of, I think it was your first event, mm -hmm. when you had people dressed up as other people. Oh, yeah, the the Blue Spiracy. That was probably one of the most creative shits I ever Thank seen. Thank you. Real. It's like, more coming. Don't and event. I, respe I, I, I respected that, that battlers actually, I, well, M-Way was O Solo, right? Yes, and Berkio was, uh, well, one way Berk, was Gwitty. Yeah, like, yes, and I was it like, did, this is fire. It did <laughs> numbers off the rip. It did numbers so quick, people was trying to say that my man's bought views, but he really didn't. What he did was, if y'all remember, Gwitty had went on this spree of battles. He was battling like every mm -hmm. weekend. Especially if Gwitty up here too, he showed my love up here. Exactly. Too, so like, yeah. And he asked them. He did the promo. Gwitty did the promo for him, and O Solo did the promo for Enway. So it was so good, and plus Gwitty had battles dropping all the time, so it was genius for Burke to be Gwitty, mm -hmm. nail it. Because if you, even if you look at the comments, people were saying, y'all really thought that this was Gwitty. And, yeah. then, I, and then I gotta go back, right? Because this is, again, impact too. Because I gotta go back, replay value, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I gotta go back and watch, because now that I'm thinking about it, I did see it on that car, and I wanna see how does somebody rap as a gas pump. Oh, he's saying, <laughs> See, Saint, and I think, um, what's his name, Triple S? Jesus? I think it was Triple S, yeah, right? Was he Jesus? Mm-mm. Mm-mm, what was hobo. Yeah, he was a hobo yeah. and the gas pump. And I'm not even going to lie. Nix and Dunny had the best costumes and nailed it the best, if you ask me. And this is why. <laughs> yeah. Nix really did that jump, did, he really did that Joker role. You have no taste. He did that role. And um, <laughs> Dunny really came in there looking like Tyro Biggums. Like, you know what I'm saying? But that's the type of stuff that I want to add to battle rap. Like, we don't always have to be grrr all the time. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I want to add the fun back into it and sprinkle. That's why I said I have a platform because I'm not trying to compete with, um, shout out to my bros, 
But I ain't trying to compete with Tom, Tom and them. I ain't trying to compete with Gully and them. It's like shit. I even hit them up and be like, yo, you got such and such booked for this date because I'm trying to do this or whatever. Yep. Now, yep. sometimes it don't always work out because then when you plan your plans around other people's plans, you know what I'm saying? Like, but, <clears throat> you know, I'm just trying to keep the fun in this shit. Because one thing that you don't hear about my events is that people come there and rap bad. Like, and that's and that's what I love because... I want to hear the bars. The Blooniverse is for people that rap. We're going to cover it. We're going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. This is the, this is the professional community for battle rap. You know what I'm saying? You want to do all that other shit? I don't know what to tell you, but you can't do it here. But we're going we're gonna to be lit. And I want to turn it into, like, I want to have an actual place for us. Like, um, that's my ultimate goal with this shit. I want to have, a, I want to turn the Blooniverse to an actual place that when people come to upstate, they can come to. And it'll be a battle rap space. It'll be set up like a battle rap space. It'll have a stage. Everything will be surrounded by the stage. And it'll be a place for us. During the week, you want to come chill? Just, it'll be a place for us. Like how they have motorcycle clubs and stuff. Mm -hmm. The Blooniverse is going to be a real place. That's fine. That's fine. Who your uh, top five overall, all time? Miss Hustle, K Shine, Jazz. <sighs> okay, E Heart, of course. And I always say, like, official, but I'm trying to think. And I already said Jazz. It what? It will have to be the old official. For sure. More. Who are your top five upstate? You gotta go there. It's my top five in upstate. King Kai. Me. Um, Stretch Mills. <laughs> um, Big Bro C B. And fucking. Damn, it's so many of us. I'm just trying to put all the lobs up there because I just want everybody to know that they the fucking best. Period. So you still lob? Yes. Okay. Just, yes, that's our lob. That's our lobuation. You know what I'm saying? That's our lobuation. I see that argued a lot. That's, yes, I, that's, <laughs> our, that's our lobuation. That's our lobuation. Um, nah, but if I would have to say overall who who's holding down the uh, top five upstate as of right now, like the whole upstate or just Buffalo? Upstate. Um, if I have to, if I'm, if I'm being a hundred percent honest, okay, I'm gonna go to the females first because we could just get that out the way. Um, I'm not active. Neek just coming up. Ill been having this shit on smash. Like, you know what I'm saying? And we have to give her her flowers. You know what I'm saying? No matter what everybody, you know, personal gripes or what they be saying, whatever, whatever. Cause they had a big issue with her for verbal war zone too for a minute. So whatever, she been holding it down. We're going to put ill there automatically. Um, the guys, we're going to say Casino C, Shell C's, King Kai, for sure. He came up here and on, on Smash immediately. Stretch Mills, Bucky. Mm. That's, if we talk about right now, I would love to see. The only way, um, I would change anything would probably be, um, if I had to just swap anybody and it would be based off of time, I would say Kai for CJA. And CJ, that's the CJA, I would say, based off of the Rum Nitty battle. And then I think it was the stretch battle before then. So it's really like it's King, King Kai for the amount of time that he's been versus um, the amount of battles, I guess, with CJA are the only interchangeable, interchangeables. Well, um, if you could give like a percentage. Mm hmm how how many of these upstate battlers really got you think what it take to get to that perceived next level like so what when i say that is like say got like, what it take when i when i say that i mean like for instance i'm gonna just say when, when a ward and them came you know you're not getting a 100 percent a ward maybe you are i don't know but I don't, I don't think he's giving his all when he comes to a small city like this or something mm -hmm. or, or not a url event or whatever and they still be going kind of crazy to me like mm -hmm. so i'll be like when is somebody gonna push the envelope you know what i'm saying with lyrics punches and the whole package you know what i'm saying where it's like so i feel like this is like a really compact question because um i feel like I, 
there's a lot of people, there's a lot of us that has what it takes mm -hmm. to do it, right? And then there's a lot of us that... It's more than just rap, right? Yeah, it's I like, think, like I for me, I feel like, like, for instance, I'll give you an example. Shout out to me. She has what it takes, right? But would I put her in front of a jazz right now? Mm -hmm. No. But she definitely got what it takes, though. Yeah. That's why the question is kind of, you know what I'm saying? So. But, like, what, okay, so what I'm saying is, like, what's missing then? You know what I'm saying? Like, she overall. Just need, she personally just need experience. She going to be all right. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of these people are battling for, like, 12 years, though. It's, it's a lot of that's experience. Offendy. I'm just coming up <laughs> on my 10th year next year, so. I'm excited for that. But um, who do I think? A percentage-wise. I just, like, I, I don't want to call out names or nothing. But, like, I would, because you know I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you know I don't. They know I don't. Um, well, if you're going to say who I think probably is the closest, it, it just in my experience, mm -hmm. what I'm hearing, I would say probably, like, because I think CJ and Stretch is probably one of like the closest battle to like URL could put that on a channel type shit. Mm -hmm. Cause it was just overall everything, punches, crowd reactions, rebuttals. They knew each other's hometowns, energies. It's a little bit of everything for me. Mm -hmm. I'll say like, um, UB definitely gives the energy cause mm -hmm. he's been very consistent. He, uh, every, I like every line being the punch. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, you know, what I'm he does have a high uh, punch count. C's. Uh, uh, even B B B D M C speaks for himself. He he's been up there. Period. You know, what I'm saying uh, even Telly. I fuck with Telly. Telly, mm -hmm. I like his charisma. His, mm -hmm. you know, what I'm saying his overall is everything. You know, what I'm saying promotion, everything. That's what I mean. You know, what I'm saying like. Um, I would say that pretty much you just named them. Um, because like I said, otherwise we'll be sitting here for a minute because there's a lot of people that got what it takes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To be honest, even myself, like, the the funniest thing that I heard recently was, oh, look where I'm at and look where you at, right? And my thing is, I had a, ch I had a choice, though. And at any given moment, when I pick my pin up, it's over for bitches. Period. I, I play with myself. No pause. Tuh. You feel me? Like, like I I fuck myself up. But motherfuckers just don't get find me find me one battle where I didn't choke a clean. And it's not like I'm choking on purpose so I can say that. Find me a battle where I didn't choke and bitches just walked over me. We can have an argument for any battle that you any battle that you choose. And that's why I was what I was. The problem is that I don't know why this small segment of my career I did basically going to choke and spree, but I also took four battles in what, six weeks? I was trying some shit out. I had to try that shit out to see if I could do it. I can't. So, so who, who, who's the toughest battle and who's, which I'm battle? A I'm my toughest battle. So which battle your most impactful battle? Uh, most impactful was Gwitty because, um, are you battle Gwitty? Yeah, I battle Gwitty. That's fine. Um, my most, it, because it meant so much for me and Woody actually called me out. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like he was supposed to battle Eliza and not at anybody that he could have chosen the time. Cause the Woody is my dog, but like, um, big Donnets energy, Donnie of the Donnets, but like, um, he my mans and we talk all the time and shit, but for him to call me out out of anybody that he could have called out and respectfully yeah he my friend but also to the culture he's goody you know what i'm saying that meant something for me so um and normally i take battles just straight off of off the, off the strength that i want to take them you're somebody who i think is nice i want to take it it means something to the storyline of who i am in battle rap i want to take it um but goody it was the first time it was like damn like this person called me out. Like, people call me out all the time, and I'm like, you don't make me want to pull my pen out. For me to go to the dollar store and buy a notebook for you, absolutely not. Now, pause before I say this, right? Mm -hmm. Look, are you the one that pulled out the dildo in the bag? <laughs> that would be me. I like that. Great for you. But he make it up to me. If he don't, my pops will. 
Nah, I'm gonna get this nigga the whole field. Fuck that! I brought the straps to see one of them hoes, Phil. Oh. What yeah. was the thought process on that one? Um, because everybody know that um, I'm poly, like a triad situation. Like, so I have a husband, but before my, he was my husband, he was just my fiance. Um, but you, just why you got to be with somebody that love you for you. He also know that I love women, pretty women, nice women with the yeeks. Like he know. Like, you know what I'm saying? So he don't make me stop um, messing with bitches and shit. So it's always a thing. Up until then. Up until the strap. It was always a thing to bring up. Oh, you're confused. You like bitches and niggas. I'm not confused. I know I like, uh, I like a nigga. And I know I like bitches. Like, that's not. That don't sound confusing to me. That sound like. I don't know what the fuck I like. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not going to, like, you know what I'm saying? Anybody that would have chose to be with me, they would have just had to accept that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because that's who I am. Now, if you don't accept that, I'm not for you, and that's okay. But it was always such a focal talking point about it. Oh, you're confused. You like bitches. You like niggas. Oh, your nigga can't fuck your bitch. We tried it. We've been there, done that. He ain't like it. He don't question me about it. Why are you? Ask your girlfriend why you so pressed about it. Like, you know? So... Um, it was more of that in that particular battle. And I was like, you know what? I'm about to go buy a strap and I'm going to pull it out in a battle. And I forgot who I was on the phone with. I think because I was buyers for hire at the time. Mm -hmm. So I think it was them, if I'm not mistaken. But I could be mistaken. But I was on the phone. I was like, yo, I'm about to buy this shit. And I had seen this big. I had I was at first I was going to get this real big juicy black one. But that was too much to try to fit into the doorway type shit. So I'm like, all right. You know, um, then I seen this blue one and it was all metallic. Like when you changed it, it looked like when you held it, it looked purple and it was all girthy and shit. <laughs> and then I was like, oh shit. Cause you know, I ain't never, I don't like, I like, I ain't gonna lie. Like when I get sex toys, I just get like little vibrators and shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't really be using dildos so I ain't know that them shits be like jiggly and shit so I was like oh yeah I'm definitely getting this shit like but I didn't put it in his face I just like I stood at a reasonable length and jiggled it a little bit you know and then I had to pull it out again because the first time my when my dude had jumped in they had jumped too early for the bar so I had to put it in the back of my pants and then pull it out again that shit was crazy I put out a pad on a dude before, too. I did. <laughs> they get disrespectful with me, but they be scared of a little a little bit of toys. I will go pause that one again for the for the audience. But, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, speak on the Rochester slash Buffalo bias. <sighs> it's, I don't even think it's just Buffalo versus Rochester bias. It's anywhere versus anywhere bias. Like, yeah, you got a home time. Yeah, you know. Especially if you somewhere where you're not expecting people from where you had to be. It's it's just going to be like that. And I also feel like um, Buffalo gets slept on so much, you know, that... And I feel like we get uh, defeated. So not defeated, but like people talk about Buffalo like it's not like the queen city. Like, you know, and at, for me, it's like the spirit of Buffalo is like at a point where it's like it's on the rise. So it's like we don't be shitting on nobody else. We mind our business. It's like we we start talking about shit that we that Buffalo is doing, and then on the inside, it's like every everywhere else be like, oh no, but you're da, da, da. and it's like yo, and Rochester and Buffalo has always had a thing ever since um, Rochester became you know Rochester mm -hmm. and not the seven one six, you know. So it's like I mean, you guys are forty seven minutes away. <laughs> I, mean, I don't really give a fuck about it. The only time it makes for good conversation is in, in the, the Buffalo versus Rochester. No, not even in the spaces because I don't care for it. Like anybody can say I don't. It's not. Is this about that's a battle? Where it come up. I'm yeah. saying that's where it come up. N not in mine. <laughs> if it's like, if is this leading to a battle? If you're arguing or bickering, you got about two or three like real good times before I'm like, so when is this battle getting set up? Right. Oh, we're not battling. We're not talking, because it's not going to lead us to no money. Especially, I told you the shit that I'm trying to do with it. You know what I'm saying? That's not going to get us there. 
arguing, fighting, niggas getting into shootouts, beefs, all that. That's not going to get us to where I'm trying to get us. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Y'all talking about some not getting paid. I'm trying to get it so that every time we open that motherfucking club, we getting paid. You get a check. You get a check. You get a check. Because we all members of upstate battle rap type shit. Real quick, because you know, we're going to wrap it up a little in a little bit too. <laughs> but real quick, how, what, what's your thoughts on all artists? Because I feel like all artists do, mm-hmm. you know, um, deserve to be paid, but I feel like they also have to be realistic on what they do get paid mm-hmm. and respect the budget. Yeah, some artists just say it because they hear other artists say yeah. it. Because if, if if your battle is, you know what I'm saying, if you get 500 views a battle or something, you only like three or four battles in, don't expect $500. Mm-mm. But here like. at the Universe, <laughs> I'll tell you this before I do my She Goes Hard real quick, but I'll tell you this, here at the Universe. You can make as much money as as many tickets that you could sell. You know what I'm saying? Um, my business model ain't no ain't no secret. Like the first time you bring me back, we split it. We split the first ten tickets half and half. The second time you bring me back fifty dollars, the next if you bring back if you get more tickets after twenty tickets, you keep all of that. That's your That's work. Fire. You know what I'm saying? I just want the money that I put back into you. Because at the end of the day, I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna be all right. If Battle Rap decided to spit me out tomorrow. I'm gonna be okay, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But if we're gonna if we're gonna be here and really, we could get money putting into ourselves, and that's my biggest thing with it. Like if you didn't put enough work in, ain't no way that you thought you was about to get something out. Mm-hmm. You know. And it even even hurt like you know what I'm saying the bigger leagues. You know what I'm saying with the artists asking for so much. Yeah, it, but it this hurt. after the bigger leagues been benefiting off of people for how long? Yeah, I know. Ago? But I'm saying just overall like. The, the, and then we're not going to talk about how the bigger leagues will pay these astronomical amounts to these men's, but That's to these saying. women's, it's barely any women even cracking 5 to 10K. I think Miss Hustle is probably one of the only ones that's really getting a bag out of this shit. One, I said one of. Mm-hmm. The only ones that's... And that's, that's sickening. Mm-hmm. That's sickening. You know? Nah, but, I agree. I don't like the 500K. Yeah. Like, what? Like, and it's like, oh, women cost more. That's the dumbest argument I ever heard. You feel me? Mm-hmm. But you know, it is what it is. That's why I tell everybody, build your own brands. I build brands and put them down like like, like a cigarette. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, what do I want to do? And now I know what I really want to do. Like, you, this this battle rap should have put you where you need to be, even if it's out of it. So you got a battle coming up? Yes, I do. October 26th, me versus Miss Pacquiana, Miss pac Oh, I cannot fucking wait. It's October 26th. Me and Neek on a card together. This is our first time being on a card together, too. Repping upstate, Rochester, and Buffalo. And it's She Goes Hard. This is our first card back outside. Mark. You know the Donette, big Donette. You know I'm J-Love versus Eliza, the big stepper. I can't wait. I just want to battle so that I can watch. I ain't even going to lie because this is it. This the one. What, I ain't even hold you. What's the energy like when you go to a platform like She Go Hard? Well, She Goes Hard is home for me. You got to think, like, after I, um, after BCBL wasn't no more, what people don't know is, like, I was uh, I was on the very first card for She Goes Hard when it still had a We Go Hard logo and it was all females and 11 girls backed out. Mm. That's why I mean, that's why Steve's fuck with me because he know, like, I, I fuck with She Goes Hard regardless. Even if I ever stopped, if I ever stopped battling, I would still go to She Goes Hard and support you know what I'm saying? And that's what I want to, I do want to get more into like helping these girls get sponsored because there's girls that want to take this to the top. And that's something that I've been thinking about. Like, yo, instead of just being in it, like I'll go, I'll still go out there whenever Steen's called me. He got a new up and coming girl he want to show out. I'll still go out there, whoop her or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I want to start putting more into the females. Like, I don't really like battling females too, too much. I, me and you talk about the shit all the time, like, cause it's like I, I we get we get shitted on so much. I like to battle these niggas, and I've never choked versus a nigga either, ever. All my chokes been versus females. Word, word. Um, so any anything you want to say to the world? Any message you got? Promote, yes. Promote all your shit, cause I know you got a bunch of shit. Big Blooniverse, join us on the spaces Tuesday through Thursday, seven thirty. And I was about to go back to seven thirty, cause it's about to be the winter time. Seven thirty until, and then we got the after dark spaces. I'm gonna let y'all know about that. Now those is unrecorded spaces, but you gotta be a big girl or a big guy to get in here. You can't be 
Ain't nobody about to play. Send the picture. Then, <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I'm about to start a little game show. Like, if y'all remember 15 Minutes of Fame used to do the uh, game show with the with with like all of the rappers and ask some battle rap questions. I'm about to start doing that for upstate. So stay in tune. And we got King's Cup with King Kai coming up his birthday card in December. And Blue Exclusive in November. I'm trying to put together a little small card. Just you know what I'm saying? Just to mix some things up. So stay tuned. This your girl Blue Juno. Live. It's Fan TV, you heard? And we out.